Welcome to the She Found Motherhood podcast. It's Dr. Alicia here. Today's episode is a bit of a different one. We're actually really excited. We have an upcoming project that we're working on getting ready to go, hopefully by the end of February. It's a podcast series that takes you week by week through your pregnancy and into the fourth trimester. It has all kinds of amazing podcasts that will help guide you through the common questions that we as healthcare providers get during pregnancy, or oftentimes the things that come up that are a little bit more common in explaining those. So you have a resource that you can listen to and understand a little bit more so you can have better conversations with your care provider or your partner or just have a better understanding in general. This is going to be one of our first trimester podcasts. It's about, it's a kind of a fun one, 10 fun things to do in your pregnancy. So we hope you enjoy it and keep an eye out on our website for our upcoming Pregnancy to Parenthood podcast series. We'll make sure that we announce it on Instagram and on our podcast when it is up and running. We really hope you enjoy this episode and we'll talk again soon. Welcome to the She Found Motherhood podcast. We are doctors Sarah and Alicia, maternity physicians and moms who have been through it all. We want to empower you with knowledge so you can have the best pregnancy, birth, and postpartum experience you can. She Found Health and She Found Motherhood is meant for general medical information only. The content of this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. This information does not apply to every situation. If you have questions or if you've received different advice, please contact your healthcare provider. Always seek the advice of your physician or another qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. The views expressed by She Found Health and She Found Motherhood and our guests are not representative of any of the institutions with which we are affiliated. Some of our podcast episodes are sponsored so that we can keep getting great info out there to you, our listeners. We only partner with companies that we truly believe in. Some of our links and suggestions may be affiliates, and we would appreciate you using them to help fund this important work. Now let's get to it. If you're listening to this week by week in your pregnancy journey, you're probably nearing the second trimester or have just started it. Congratulations. This is so exciting. Hopefully, your first trimester symptoms are starting to simmer down. You can really start to enjoy your pregnancy as you've heard the baby at your care provider appointments and maybe even seen them in an early ultrasound. This is the time when most parents start to relax and settle into their pregnancy journey, and we hope this is the case for you. We thought we would put together a fun podcast for you all about how you can start enjoying and documenting your pregnancy, as well as some of the things that we found really helpful or wished we had done in our pregnancies. Pregnancy is such an amazing time in our lives, but sometimes we can feel really gross. So we put together our top 10 fun things to do in early pregnancy to help focus on those fun things. We also have a list of things you must do in early pregnancy that we'll link in our show notes. So number one, keep a pregnancy journal. We often forget what happens to us during certain experiences and looking back can be so fun and bring back some great memories. Pregnancy is no different. This is such a special time for many people with many changes occurring. Take five minutes a day or a week to write down things that happened, how you're feeling, good or bad. What are your hopes and worries? What are you looking forward to? You can even work on your gratitude or positivity journaling at the same time, which we know is protective for mental health as well. We'll post a couple of our favorites below. The other thing, it's nice in the second pregnancy to go back and look at the yeah. first pregnancy to see how it was the same or how was it different. And if we don't write it down, even though you think you're going to remember it, you really won't. Mm -hmm. You won't. <laughs> Number two, and this is along the same vein, is taking serial pictures. So similar to journaling, it's really fun to see how your body's changing over the pregnancy. So you can try documenting it weekly or every couple of weeks. Try to choose like a consistent outfit leggings and a specific t-shirt, for example, that are all one color with a clean background and good lighting. This is super fun to look back on, especially with your first pregnancy. You can do things together, put it into a video, and it's really fun to watch and especially fun for your kids to look back on once they're born and bigger and they can see them growing inside your belly. My kids love to look at the pictures of when I was pregnant with them. Oh, I know. It's so sweet. So some people start thinking about this early, other people not, but start a list of names. Mm -hmm. Some people know exactly what their kiddos' names are going to be even prior to getting pregnant, but others don't. So keep a notebook or a section on your phone to keep a list of ongoing names you like. This will change over your pregnancy, and when your pregnancy brain starts to kick in, you'll forget the names you had heard even earlier that day. Totally. And it's really important to have a list of many names, especially if you haven't talked about them with your partner. 
Because if your partner is a teacher, for example, I find our patients who are teachers have the hardest time naming their kids because they have so many associations with so many names. So the more names, the merrier. You can always whittle it down. And another tip, don't tell anybody what your child's name is going to be until after they are born and you've named them. Yes. Everybody has an opinion on names, but once your child is named, they won't say the negative opinions. No, exactly. Another really key tip and fun thing to do is to learn some hacks to prolong your clothes. So definitely you're going to need maternity clothes and especially pants. So invest in those early on once your pants start getting a little tight. You can also just get a couple of good pairs of leggings and a pair of jeans or work pants. Skirt if you like skirts as well, and you should be good to go. If you have a favorite pair of jeans, you can actually extend their life, usually through the first trimester and sometimes even into the second trimester with a belly band, pant extenders. Some people even just take a hair elastic and loop it through the belt loop and put it over the button. But there's lots of little tips and tricks. And some of these clothes you can wear postpartum as well. Number five invest in some maternity clothes or better yet, borrow a friend's. Mm -hmm. Like we said above, investing in a few good pieces is nice and you feel good when you fit into your clothes. But you can also ask a friend who was recently pregnant to borrow some of them. We use them for such a short period of time. It can be really hard to buy new ones and also not great for the environment if you're just going to be getting rid of them again. Also, look into the secondhand clothing stores for maternity wear or there's lots of online garage sale Facebook marketplaces that you can really get a lot of good finds to wear during maternity. Totally. And a really good place to look is um, at kids' consignment stores. Many children's consignment stores actually also sell maternity clothes. And so if you're having trouble finding a spot, check out some of the children's clothing stores because they often have maternity stuff as well. Oh, my gosh. The next tip is like literally the story of my life. Look at childcare options. I know it seems totally crazy to start thinking about this so early, but it can be really necessary in many communities to get on lists early. So just start doing some research. Put your name on some daycare lists. Look into what is happening in terms of nannies. There's lots of Facebook groups that are about childcare, whether here in Victoria or wherever you're finding. Get onto a Facebook childcare site. And then start talking to your friends and see what they're doing and see what you think will work for you. Chat with your partner and see what your ideas are. If you're wanting to have your kids close together, an in-home child care provider might be better for you. If you're not really sure, daycare is definitely a great option for a lot of families. But you've got to get on those lists super duper early. I know, Alicia, so we're on a video and we're nodding at each other. I'm still having child care problems and my youngest is four. <laughs> Number seven, start some Pinterest boards. We all love a Pinterest. It's so much fun looking at ideas for pregnancy photo shoots, nursery designs, baby, baby photos, etc. Sometimes we can have tough pregnancies mm -hmm. and we need a little pick-me-up here and there. Do you know that we actually have a Pinterest site? We do. Check it out at She Found Motherhood. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the cool thing about Pinterest is you can stay on there as your baby grows. There's like awesome Toy storage ideas, really good craft ideas, really good educational ideas, really great food recipes for young kids. Just get on there and have some fun. And another thing that we talk about in our preparing for postpartum in our online prenatal course, one of the things we talk about is creating a Pinterest board of the your favorite foods and recipes so you can share that to people mm. when you're planning for that postpartum time so they can see what kind of recipes you actually like and they can make for you and bring over to you when you're postpartum. So we talk about that and a ton of other things to prepare for postpartum in our online prenatal course. Genius idea. The other thing that we recommend you do is making a list of things you need, not things you want, but things you need, and keeping an eye out for them with friends who may be having children just moving out of the phase you're going into on Craigslist, on Facebook, on Barrage Sale, Buy and Sell, etc. The reason being is baby stuff is expensive and a lot of it is not necessary. But if there's some things that you really want or you need to have, just start making a list. Things like strollers, bassinet. You can often find this stuff on big sales on used sites. We also have a postpartum must-have list and you can check that out below. And that includes things that you should have around the house for you and baby. And then there's also those little things that you might want to have, like a baby rocker, a baby swing. That stuff is definitely not necessary. But if you're looking for it, you can often find it secondhand, minimally used. Or get on Black Friday sales or yes. all those Boxing Day sales. And if you're planning ahead and you've done your research a little bit early on, you're more likely to get a really great deal on some of those mm -hmm. things. 
Absolutely. So our ninth tip is signing up for an Amazon Prime account. You get 20% off disposable diapers when you're signed up on Amazon Prime. I cloth diapered my first, but I wish I'd known about this for my second. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can get up to 20% off your diaper orders. And that is a ton of money if you're planning on using disposable diapers exclusively or just partially. So <laughs> we've linked our link below if you want to check it out. Another great thing is the Audible, online yes. Audible books through Amazon. And they have all kinds of amazing books for pregnancy, for postpartum. And when you're doing a ton of breastfeeding postpartum, we don't really want you looking at your screen all the time in the middle of the night because it's going to keep you awake. But listening to a great audiobook is a wonderful way to yeah. do it. It's going to keep you from getting mom thumb too. The last thing, and now if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably already doing it. But just as a reminder, follow us on social media. We have tons of free content on all things pregnancy, childbirth, postpartum, and newborn. We have our podcast. We've got some videos on a YouTube channel, and we're all over Instagram. We'll post all the links in the show notes, just in case you're not there already. We also have a great online childbirth class, which helps to decrease your anxiety going into childbirth so you can feel more confident and empowered going through the process, and you can be able to enjoy the experience and relish in those first few moments of holding your baby. We'll link everything we talked about in the show notes below. So that's it for this 10 fun things to do in pregnancy. We would love to hear about all of the amazing things that you did. So send us a message on Instagram and let mm -hmm. us know if any of these resonated with you. If you start doing them, we would love to hear about it. Also, if you have a friend who's not on this podcast and you think that they would find this interesting, send them a screenshot of the podcast and suggest they get signed up. All right, guys, take care and we'll touch base soon.